Hey, we're back here with another episode of Art Attack. I'm Nikki. I'm Merrick. I'm Lea. I'm Marina. I'm Ian. And today we're featuring an artwork that's maybe familiar with many Filipinos. So the first thing we're gonna do is to engage with this artwork without having biases in mind and without knowing first the historical context of this artwork. So, any of you guys want to say something? Okay, so upon looking at the artwork, the first emotion I got was that it's something that's very barbaric, something very cruel. You see this guy pulling another guy by the hand. He's just dragging the guy. So, Initially, I'm guessing the message of this artwork would be that um, it's something it's something we shouldn't do as humans. We should be more compassionate towards one another. We shouldn't treat each other as animals or anything lesser. I mean, that's how I see it. Um, for me, uh, I can see like this couple right there. It seems like they're only uh, audiences of what's actually happening. They see the yeah, they see the barbaric things that, that are happening but they can do anything they're just there watching so it's like they, it's like they don't have a choice uh, they can see what's wrong but it seems they're powerless to change what's wrong or that's 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 how I see it. or maybe maybe like it, it also it, it's, it's also it's also talking about the concept of neutrality when we see something cruel happening maybe we shouldn't be neutral about it maybe, maybe that can be it well what I noticed is how majority of the painting is just black. It's, it's very dark. It's like the it's like the painter just forgot all his colors and just used black for everything. Yeah, and but also with that there, there's the highlight of the red colors as well, aside from the dark colors. So what may be the implications of the usage of such colors? What do you think? Well, in general I think black is like it it evokes uh, an emotion of, of like fear or being in a like saying you're being in a dark place means that something is wrong, something needs something needs changing, something like that. Um, for me, it actually reminded me of the lyrics of the song in Lamis, like I read the blood of angry man, blah. My world when she's not there, something like that, and it somehow relates red to something like despair, and even black is despair. So I guess I guess that's one of the themes of the painting. Well, another thing I noticed is if you look at this guy on the ground, you can see how deformed the body is. It's like it's like it was painted wrong. Yeah. So, but if you see it more closely, he's actually. Uh, like his bones are very crushed. I also noticed that because of the quality of the picture, we can clearly see those people in the background. You yeah. agree? Yeah. Mm. Actually, when you move the screen, like you can also actually just see like the people, the white people. <laughs> like yeah. uh, you can't background. see the background anymore from this angle. From my angle. Well, like if you really look at the closely, there seems to be people around. Or it can be that people simply are just ignorant of what's happening right in front of them. When you're neutral to something, you help the bad more than you help the good. I agree with that statement. Okay, so now we've given our initial idea of what the painting is trying to say. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna delve deeper into the meaning of the painting by going back in time. This way we can get a clear understanding of what this really means. Okay, so this painting right here is called Spoliard. It was uh, painted by Juan Luna in the year 1884, and the medium on it is oil on oil painting. It's an oil painting on canvas, and the dimensions are actually quite big in person, 4.22 meters. 
meters by 7.675 meters. That's found in the National Museum uh, here in the Philippines. So yes, that's the context of it. So we're gonna try to see if those if things change and maybe maybe the meaning, maybe what we got was not exactly Maybe there's more to it than what we've already said, and we can we can get to that meaning by analyzing these. Yes, and more on the context, uh, when Luna submitted this painting, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, during the for a contest in Madrid that he won first place for. So it's a contest. In Madrid exposition of 1884. And it's supposed to depict uh, the bodies of gladiators being dragged down after the, their battle in the public, right? Well, now that you've mentioned it, red and blue colors of the Philippine flag. So oh, like uh, how it hits the how it hits the skin or the white parts, it's very yellowish. Maybe you know, red means flag. Well, okay, oh, like. Okay, so I got, I got, I got, I got an idea. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the Philippine flag red represents like more of the fighting aspect, mm -hmm. right? And more represents peace. And if, as you can, if you can, if you notice in the photo, there's more red than there is blue. Maybe that says something. Maybe there's more war. Maybe there's more. Um, maybe the way we approach things is more aggressive. Or we were more aggressive towards things and we are peaceful, maybe that's what it's trying to say. Yeah. So, picking up from your point, as far as I know, I think this realistic painting shows the uh, exact situation of the country during when it was painted. This depicts the Spanish colonial period in the Philippines. One of his four aspects of art is that 
life imitates art more than the other way around. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, because Juan Luna painted this with one thing in mind. He didn't really know what was going, yeah. what would be going on in the future, and yet our world can kind of be represented by this, mm -hmm. our situations. But I think this is against the composition of Wild because um, it's a realistic painting, isn't oh, it? Yeah. So I think it really depicts the real situation of the country. So uh, as far as I remember, uh, Wild says in the reading that This is not This is not beautiful. Very very yeah. But if you think about it, it's sort of a lie. Because Juan Luna didn't paint this to show what's happening today, right? No. Juan Luna didn't paint this to represent what's happening in, during the time of the gladiators in the school art. Oh, yeah. He painted this for what's happening in the Exact truth, but it represents the truth. Yes. I think he, he's just trying to represent uh, a different problem from far away in a context that during that time he would really get uh, oppressed for sins. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a, a sin to go against uh, Spanish colonial rule. I think one Luna that he did from Leo's point is because he did this painting to serve as an eye opener. What do you think? Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Agree with that. Yeah. yeah, what's pretty ironic with this situation though is that we don't want to be in this situation. Yet if you look there's a crowd, there's a there's a crowd in things like this that during that time like uh, this was a show. This was entertainment for people. But when you think about it, would you ever really want to be in this position? That's a good end on the analysis. So now we're going to talk about how reproduction affects the meaning of this painting. So for me, as far as I know, I think this painting is mainly reproduced for educational books for those students in the primary level. It's because they study history and the main purpose of incorporating this painting into those books is for, uh, for knowing what happened before. Therefore, I think for that, for educational purpose, I think it does not change the meaning of the painting because the teachers and the students uh, dig deeper into the historical context to know the real meaning of this painting. Okay. Well, let us view um, um, a different version of this painting. one that will be commonly seen in textbooks and although I get Nikki's point I 
to some extent, I, to some extent, I kind of disagree with it because earlier um, the painting was darker, and um, so given that the initial emotion I got was something that's that and that was it was a negative emotion towards the painting. I, I knew the painting was delivering a message that was not positive because of the colors color scheme used. However, in this painting, it, it's bright. So initially, upon looking at it, it's something that appeals to me as positive, not as negative. And on top of that, this does not really showcase um, the details of the faces. Um, for instance, earlier, Yan said, Yan talked about how the body of the gladiator being dragged seemed deformed. It's not something you can really notice here because everyone seems deformed. And well, well, basically that, that that's the main that's that's the main reason as to why it doesn't really um, connote the same message. That, that that's what I think at least. For me, I think uh, it's, it's more on uh, the purpose of why they're reproducing that certain work of art. So it was mentioned for educational purposes. Uh, as far as I remember, I learned about the school area because uh, Juan Luna is a hero and when they discuss heroes in classes you have to show uh, the achievements of that certain hero and then they will show this but I don't think teachers would discuss the very grim uh, meaning behind the, the actual painting Agreed. You, you don't get to discuss those details in class um, especially the children yeah especially in our type of culture we're in uh, we're kind of uh, uh, babied by our older generation so like you only get to actually understand the true meaning of the art when you see it uh, maybe somewhere in the museum when you can see the scolarium right in front of you already or when you view it in a, in a, in a class like the, an art appreciation class because you're supposed to actually discuss the art not not just like discuss the art because one can make it yeah if there's like emphasis on the art, on the old art. art. Thank you for we'll see you next week.